Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in because in this video we are going to take a close look at the Neo Geo AES. It's a classic video game system that is still beloved by many of gamers or retro gamers today. Released in 1990, the console was designed to offer a home experience that replicated the look and the feel of the arcade games. We have known Neo Geo, many of us by the MVS that we found in the arcades and AES was bringing it basically at our home televisions. It featured impressive graphics and sounds of course, like the arcade, and it was widely considered to be ahead of its time when it comes to the overall quality and the games itself. Some of us may say that it is key of the strength of the Neo Geo AES library. Personally, I am just a big fan. Think about Samurai Showdown, King of Fighters, Art of Fighting 1 or 3, of course we're having Breakers Revenge and games like Metal Slug. I think they were like ahead of its time and they are still playable and so much fun up to today. However, the Neo Geo AES did have some weaknesses. The most obvious one was the price. When it was released, the console was significantly more expensive than the other consoles on the market. So where Nintendo and Sega were dominating the market when it comes to games. And of course Neo Geo was something of a completely different game. A lot of games were ported to the system 16-bit. Think about an let's say Art of Fighting or Fatal Fury was available, but of course not the same quality like the AES or the real arcade hardware. But another problem we're having so is that we didn't have like a lot of Neo Geo AES systems sold. And this means that availability is going to be very difficult finding one in a good condition or even complete unbox I'm showing here in this video. And in combination with the popularity nowadays when it comes to retro gaming, Neo Geo is going to be even more expensive than it maybe already was back in the day. So Neo Geo is just an absolutely great piece of equipment to get if you're like a big fan and you do have like some deep pockets to go with it. But it doesn't spoil the fun because in this video I'm also going to show you some different ways to play. I want to welcome you to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. But recently I acquired a Neo Geo AES complete in box. I want to say it's in mint condition because finding that one in mint condition is going to be even with a more hefty price tag. It does have some wear and tear due of the age of the box. But I think it's so cool to own a box. I'm just going to be honest, I am not really that box collector. For me, it's all about owning the original hardware with some games. But I did have the opportunity to get one and I was more like, let's make a video about this. I just wanted to give you an overview of the box itself and you will see like there is a lot of wear and tear, especially on the edges. So maybe in the future I will get myself a box protector. I will put this thing in my collection where it's dry and where it's safe. But unfortunate, yeah, the age of the box, it's not going to be getting better from this point on. Of course, the protector can help. In the inside, we will have all of the styrofoam and everything is in good condition. But also in today's video, I just want to share this unboxing experience when it comes to the Neo Geo AES. How was it back in the day getting to us? So when I'm looking at the overall quality of the styrofoam, it seems to be in very nice condition. And I already mentioned that, but I was just flabbergasted. The quality of the Neo Geo system, it seems to be having not a lot of scratches. It will need a good clean because I do see some wear and tear and some dust on it. It comes including one controller, an RGB SCART cable and the power supply. I don't know if this is an original cable that came with it, but I can tell you we do have like better solutions now. The controller is also in good condition, but not perfect because the ball is cracked like every single one of them. It's just a general problem. You can see it over here. It comes with the original power supply. I cannot really use it because this is a 100 volt power supply and we're having 230 volts over here. I do have like a converter block that we will use in this video. And one of the things I have personally never seen is the original manual. And let's take a close look together with it, because let's see what are we going to get and what kind of stuff are they explaining in here. It comes with some extra cards. I'm just going to be honest, I have no idea what is going on over here. And it seems to be that this thing even comes with an original certificate. Let's scroll through the manual itself. Also, the manual is in very nice condition. There is no weird folding, like page, folded pages or something like that. And it explains basically how you need to connect the system, the controller, and how everything works. And they're also going to mention even the memory card that we're also going to talk about later on in this video. But that is basically what I'm going to get inside the box itself. And again, there are even some upgrades when it comes to the cables and the power supply. So that's also what we're going to talk about in this video. 
But for me, when it comes to the video games, I really love the cartridge itself. They are absolutely gigantic. I have a very humble collection and they will stay this way. With a simple reason, because everything Neo Geo related, especially the AES, is crazy expensive. My personal humble collection exists of original AES and also a couple of multi-game card systems. But later we are going to talk about it more. So the games that having from the AES system originally, no MVS conversions, they are like the cheaper games because I cannot spend more than 100 euro on a single game. Only there is one exception and that is Xeno Crisis for the AES. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I picked up this game for every single system, including Steam. I'm such a big fan of theirs and noticing that you can buy an AES limited edition. And this is just such a cool opportunity. I don't want to even mention how much I paid for this because it's absolutely expensive compared with, say, all the other games I'm having. But compared with, say, the price now, it's absolutely a great deal. I really love the snap box they're using and it gives still like a little, little bit of a Neo Geo AES old school feeling. Inside the package we're going to get ourselves the cartridge, later on we're going to talk about some more about this. And of course we do have like a lot of goodies including a manual. And I think this is just one of those cool ways to play when it comes to the AES and an opportunity I just needed to grab. Because I love the Neo Crisis but also my AES. So this is, I think this is one of my most expensive games I ever bought for it. But let's talk about the configuration of the buttons and of course Xeno Crisis on the Neo Geo AES. It's not perfect. With let's say in Sega Genesis Mega Drive controller, we have six buttons. So we have like four of them can be used for let's say shooting to a certain direction. And a couple of them can be used for let's say in grenade. You know, and we were missing out or in the dash, don't forget the dash. So we don't only having like four buttons. So there's no option of configuring that. How cool would it be like walking at this and shooting to a certain direction, but we're missing out. Just a couple of, let's say, shoulder buttons, for example. So that is a thing that we're having with the Neo Geo version. Not a big problem, but that's something I just needed to mention. Well, let's take a closer look at the gameplay itself. It runs really well. It's so much fun playing this game on my AES. I know a couple of people even bought it for the AMVS system. That's absolutely great. But one thing is fact, I really suck at this game. But let's do a quick overview of the cartridge itself. These things are absolutely huge, even coming with two PCBs. So I really love what they're doing over here when it comes to the newer generation. The unfortunate thing is, like here you can see, I think it's getting a little bit loose. Let's be very gentle, put it back. At the back, we're also going to get a serial number. I know these things can still be bought on different places, but not original. And I mean, like there are some reproduction going around. So take a suggestion if you're going to find an Xeno Crisis, always double check if it comes even with the original sticker. But I understand if that fake one doesn't have this. But let's talk about the cartridge size, because this thing is absolutely huge. So when you're comparing this with a Super Famicom cartridge or Super Nintendo cartridge, or you're just going to compare this with a Mega Drive, you can see how huge this cartridge is. Like of course, if you're holding this in your hand, then you're going to be even like noticing that it's always quite difficult to show you and giving you an exact like, say, idea how big it is. But I can tell you, it's absolutely huge. But if you want to start collecting when it comes to Neo Geo, there are a couple of different ways to go to. So I've already spoken about the AES, the home console system. And this is basically like a reproduction or better said, a new game they released for it. But there's also a reproduction that we're going to talk about later on too. But this is the MVS version. And the MVS, they are like significant cheaper than it comes to the AES. But even this thing looks very similar when it comes to the two PCB boards. This doesn't fit on the AES and also the other way around. There are converters for this. And of course, if you want to play a metal slug like I'm having over here, this cartridge, it's still expensive but it is so much more cheaper than getting the one from the AES. It doesn't come with a fancy box. And the other thing they also do is like having a conversion where they convert the MVS version into an AES cartridge. But again, for me, like it's maybe a great way to play to get these things cheaper. But I have like some double feeling around it because for me, you're having the original games, reproduction or new games like Xeno Crisis, or you're just having the MVS. And converting the MVS to AES you know, it's kind of, I have a double feeling about it. Let me know in the comments what you think about the situation. Would you consider picking up a cartridge? 
But if you just want to have an AES in your collection and want to play a couple of more games than you're having, or you don't want to pay like two, three, four thousand for a freaking game, it's absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. But then, of course, we have the option to use yourself a multi game card. Oh, for the people wondering, is there a Neo Geo flash card? There is, but also that one is absolutely difficult to find and super expensive. So, in my opinion, one of the cheapest ways is getting a multi game card. So over here we're having the MVS version, that's basically the one I've talked about, like the arcade system, not the home version we're talking about here in this video. This is just basically like one of those multi-game cards you're going to get. The downside is that we do have not every single game on here, we do have like a lot of cool games, but unfortunately it is like very limited. But in here we're going to find the card, which if you're going to get them like separately, we do have like a way cheaper, just a way to get them. Also, we have like a different like rabbit hole to search and to check out because we have like different multi-game cards out there. I think I found in total four of them. This is version number two because it does still have problems like version number one. So over here we're going to get two of the four versions. And what do I mean with four? So what you're basically going to get is this is version number one and version number two. So do, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I understand of these cartridges, so basically they are like the same. Maybe this one has like some minor improvements, but when it comes to certain games, it still have problems. It's unfortunate, and it seems to be there was a new version out there. Didn't get the chance to review it, but that thing seems to be having alphabetic order and having way more fixes. And there was also, what I understand is like this cartridge comes also in a green color. Don't know if there are any like differences when it comes to the quality. Maybe we can check out also with that in the future. But the multi-game card is one of those really cheap ways to play. But there is all another thing you need to take consideration with this. Let's take a close look at the list and what you can see already here is just one big freaking mess. No alphabetic order like on the box. We have here SNK vs Capcom. Plus we have in the RMX. We have in here and other versions. So, what the hell? SNK vs Capcom Super Plus and so on and so on so when you're pressing up and down we go to the next game with left and right we can choose the next page i'm going to scroll quickly through the list and what you can see all double games look at this look at this list king of fighters 2002 look at many versions we're going to get i wish they wouldn't do that and i was hoping with version number two that they just remove all of the double stuff Okay, if, let's say if we're having a blood version with the plus edition, I can understand they're going to put two day games on it, but still, it's just filling up the list. We're getting later on the list, we're going to see that there are not a lot of doubles anymore, but there are missing out games like Sen Goku 2. We're having one and three, but we don't have two. Kind of a bummer, in my opinion. You can see that we're having here Puzzle Bubble 1 and 2. Going any further. So here you can see that here we don't have any doubles left. So that is quite interesting to see that they messed it up with the beginning of the list. You need to remember your numbers like with the Pandora's boxes. Well, let's take a close look at the power supply because this is a different story. So if you're going to use an original AES game and you guys are going to use yourself the original power supply, there is no problem whatsoever. For me, I cannot use this because this thing is AC 100 volts and we are using 230 volts over here. So this is what I'm going to need to use. I personally really hate these things. I need to get myself a new one. It seems to be correct. Something happened. But the thing is, I need to plug in this thing and just like use it like this. And again, this thing makes some zooming sound. I really freaking hate it. So what I'm going to do, and that's another thing you need to take consideration. If you're getting yourself like a different power supply, not only for the region you're living in like me, but when you're using an MVS game with a converter, but also when you're having like the multi-game card, what I understand of the thing needs to have more, more juice. So in my case, I'm going to get myself like a light on and yeah, some of them say like you need to double check if everything is like corresponding to your version Neo Geo. Yeah, this thing seems to be 12 volt. It needs me no problem, but I am always super careful with this. Uh, yeah, I think I need to double check over here because you have like different kind of versions when it comes to the power supplies they are selling you. Of course, you can always get yourself like a universal. It is always better to get yourself like the right voltage. But this is something you need to be very careful with. And I'm going to double check this here. This can be right. But there's another thing. The cables. So when it comes to this original version I'm having over here. Or I don't even know if this is an original cable. Looks like, like not really an original cable. But doesn't matter. So this thing just have like a SCART connector. If you want to have like the ultimate experience when it comes to Neo Geo. And good cable is necessary. So there's this company in the UK. Or a couple of them. This is one of those like cool 
novelties.co.uk, but there are a couple of things out there Spe selling like special cables. This, for example, needs the plug at the front, so we have what I understand of stereo sound. But also when it comes to the cables, oh, also here we're having like a major difference. But playing on the Neo Geo, also there we do have like different options and solutions. Some are dirty cheap, some need to be avoided, and some are just freaking awesome. An experience you will never forget. But let's talk about the controllers. The one I was really disappointed is this weird looking Sega Saturn controller. We have shoulder buttons, that's absolutely great, but you need to push them, up, push them in really hard. And it's absolutely a piece of garbage. The D-pad is more like this floating D-pad we will find on a Sega Genesis controller. But I can tell you, like this is not the experience you want, and this is something you absolutely should avoid. The original Neo Geo CD controller, the first time I just played with this was absolutely great and it was an experience I will never forget. The button configuration is different because of the size of the controller, because when you're looking at the arcade stick, they are basically putting in, in a row over here. That's basically what I understand, the original configuration of the Neo Geo games. By the end, like this controller is so cool. It's such a weird experience too, because you're having no D-pad, you have just the micro switch, like tiny joysticks under your thumb. It's really cool, I love it. And also the controller ergonomics, I am just in love with this thing. Then we're having the arcade, let's say the controller that came with it at the right side. And the left side, we're gonna get ourselves the arcade version or the arcade stick for the new GOCD, what I understand of. They're always coming with this very nice clicky. Oh man, this sound is great. We can make an ASMR video about this, but this is absolutely great. We're having different kind of buttons. They are bigger than the previous model over here, but they play great. It's unlike my brain buttons, not like the micro switch that we have seen with, say, I've seen Pandora's boxes and stuff like that. But last but not least, that we're going to get ourselves the original arcade stick. The form factor is so ergonomic. When you're looking at the way how this thing looks, I realize, by the way, I need to clean this thing more often. <laughs> or I didn't clean it at all. It does have some wear and tear on it. Of course, the ball is cracked, so maybe in the future I will replace that. We do have some wear over here when it comes to the logo, because they're putting their hand on here. But these things are quite old, of course. The buttons are smaller, also membrane. But I'm a, I, I don't know, man. Like When you're looking at the ergonomics, this thing plays so well. But which one is my favorite? That is quite difficult. I find it very difficult to say because I really like both of them. And sometimes I just play with my Neo Geo CD pad. So when looking in this page of the manual that I've been looking at in before, in the beginning of this video, is as we're having over here talking about the memory card. And yup, Wicked does have one. Because in the first, let's say, Neo Geo I bought, it came with a freaking memory card. So what I do understand of these things is that you need to open them up because there was something wrong with the battery inside, or that is what I understand of this situation. I just have this thing pure out of nostalgia and novelty. I just love this thing. But it was also like an, a solution for this. So JapaneseGameOnline.com they also sell stuff on Aliexpress. They are having like this option that we're even having like two banks. So this is just like a two-in-one memory card. In my opinion, it's of care for nostalgia region. If you want to display your Neo Geo, this is just the way to get. Maybe the F1 is refurbished, but this original or this new version that replaced the original is absolutely a great solution. But where do you slide it in? At the right front part. There is no valve like for like closing up for dust. It's kind of interesting the way how they construct this. Just sliding in your memory card and that's it. Let's slide in the different one. Just to see how this fits. When it comes to the size, it's perfect. And that's it. I'm gonna say the construction is quite nice. But let's take a close look at the system itself because it's quite a, just, just a very interesting and very huge one. Like the cartridge, everything is huge with Neo Geo. Over here, we have the reset button at the front. We're going to get ourselves two controller ports. The volume control is over here. Then we're having the on and off switch, the memory card slot. And let's take a close look at the back. This is an original system. It's not modded because there are like modifications out there or modded in VS of AES. I'm almost saying it wrong. And here we're just having Davy out and the input for the power. But when it comes to let's say play original Neo Geo, of course, within CT would be like the ultimate way. To be honest, I don't really mind it sometimes to play actually on an LCD using the right cable. It does look very nice. I know he was going to jump.
different game and again on the LCD and this game I also picked it up and combined with Fatal Fury 2 and I did it the right before so that's something I just wanted to do so yeah let's record it and let's play some oh I completely messed up with this game I put it on normal I completely forgot how like oh man how awful some of the new Geo games are when it comes to difficulty and the CPUs <laughs> So let's go into the full retro mode. Let's try out Xeno Crisis, brand new released from the Bitmap Bureau for the AES. Freaking awesome. And we're going to play it old school style. And we're also going to try it out with the Neo Geo CD controller. games are financially out of my reach so if you want to play the only way is a naughty way there are flash cards but those are like super expensive too so the multi game card is a great way to play but it is not perfect i made a full review about it and it did have a lot of errors inside and despite it's also like an incomplete collection we still have a lot of cool games to play that are quite expensive and again, like the multi-game card is an easy way if you don't want to swap every single time in your original games and you just want to put them in your collection. And again, the multi-game cards are not very cheap too, also this is super expensive. But in the end, Neo Geo is absolutely in a crazy way to play. Super expensive in many different ways and there were some shortcuts I've shown you in this video. But again, like even the shortcuts, they are expensive. I think it's a you need to be like a big huge new G fan and like coming with deep pockets to get a couple of these items and again like I'm happy for the stuff I having with this humble collection that is the thing you also need to take consideration if you want to buy everything nowadays besides having deep pockets in my opinion there are different ways to play new geo they're just as fine for now I am very happy to have one of those AES system in my collection I just daily use it and I just really enjoy it Thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell and it will be great to see you in the next video.